Welcome back, everybody. We're back here with Ambassador Susan Rice. Uh, Ambassador Rice, um, you said recently that Donald Trump is essentially giving Russia his blessing to interfere with our election. Um, what do we know about foreign interference so far? Well, we know at least what the intelligence community has said publicly recently, that Russia is again actively trying to interfere in our election. And they're doing it through a variety of means. They're, they're doing it by trying to potentially inter, uh, inject themselves into our voting systems and our voting rolls and manipulate the actual mechanics of the election. They're every day on social media spreading. Wait, does that mean, I hate to interrupt you, but do that mean literally like um, affect the voting outcome? That's, in 2016, they tried to uh, infiltrate the voting systems of a number of different states. They didn't succeed at that time in actually manipulating, say, the voter rolls. So if you show up at the polls, you know, you're not registered where you think you're supposed to be registered. And they didn't succeed in trying to uh, mess with the vote tallies. But I don't think we should assume that, that just because they didn't succeed the first time, they won't continue to try. So that's one concern on the most extreme version. But they're intervening in some other ways that we know for sure are very serious. Spreading disinformation, uh, pitting Americans against each other on social media, causing us to doubt uh, the integrity of our democracy. And then we also know that Russian uh, individuals are working with members of Congress and folks close to Donald Trump, like Rudy Giuliani, to try to fabricate disinformation that they can use against Joe Biden uh, via Ukraine. That's the whole thing that we all watched during impeachment. So there are all these different ways. And Donald Trump has essentially said very publicly, he'd welcome foreign assistance. And he went out on the South Lawn and asked China to intervene after he'd already tried to manipulate the Ukrainian government into intervening. So we have a president who is seeking actively the interference of foreign governments, hostile foreign governments in several cases, against his opponent in order to win. Not to mention the fact that he says he's not leaving office, uh, perhaps, or he's going to postpone the election. Or as he said today, apparently, you know, if I don't win, by definition, the election is, you know, is corrupt. This is craziness. Yeah, it, it, it is craziness. Um, it, he Feelings must be hurt about that China thing, though, because my understanding is that uh, it has been reported that China and Iran would favor Joe Biden. Now, an, equi an, an equivalency has been made between that and Russian interference. What is the difference between those two things? Well, first of all, if you read carefully what the intelligence community said, uh, they said Russia is in a category all of its own, uh, doing much more active measures to interfere in our elections. And then it said Russia obviously very much wants Donald Trump reelected. It then assessed that China and Iran, to a far lesser extent and a far more overt way, particularly with China, is basically just trying to put public messages out there uh, that could be um, uh, of some influence in various different parts of the country, but not the covert kinds of means that Russia is undertaking. Um, and, you know, it, it, they threw China and Iran in there and tried to create a false equivalency for those who weren't paying close attention. I imagine to curry the favor of Donald Trump, who's put enormous pressure on the intelligence community uh, to underestimate uh, the, the role of the Russians in this. But Russia's in a category all its own. Uh, and they are the adversary in, in this particular regard that we need to be most mindful of. Now, um, there's, a, there's another threat to a fair election, and that's Donald Trump's attacks on the post office. Um, what do people need to know about that? Well, what Donald Trump is trying to do is, first of all, discredit the safety and security of voting by mail, whether absentee or mail-in voting. And there is absolutely no credible evidence to suggest that it's any less secure to vote by mail or absentee, which but would explain as, why Donald Trump himself is voting by absentee ballot. But as, so, as Mark Meadows said to Jake Tapper, there is no evidence that there isn't fraud. That is the most dishonest statement that I've even actually heard out of Mark Meadows, which is saying something. But in any event, 
Uh, now Donald Trump is taking it to another level, which is to disable the postal system, ripping out post boxes, taking out sorting machines, putting in place you know, rules that make it impossible for postal workers to do their jobs efficiently. It's unbelievable. And the American people need to call BS on this because not only does it undermine and, and corrupt our democracy, which by the way, hurts Republicans as well as Democrats. That messes everybody up, up right. and down the ballot, rural, urban, you name it. But it also means that veterans aren't getting their medicines and seniors aren't getting their social security checks. And all of us aren't getting our birthday cards and the packages that we need and small businesses are suffering. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I need my $5 from my grandmother. <laughs> exactly. Now, Trump, it's Trump, nuts. It's uh, nuts. Trump has disrupted major relations with foreign countries left the Iran deal, negotiated with Kim Jong-un, launched a trade war against China, pulled out of the Paris Agreement, got out of the, uh, the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. If Biden wins, what should his top priority be? He's going to have many simultaneously. But the first, with respect to international relations, is renewing and repairing the trust that we have lost with our allies and making sure that they again know that we have shared interests and shared values. It's being clear about who our adversaries are, getting back into the Paris Climate Agreement and dealing with this pandemic globally, Stephen, because I'm not sure Americans fully understand. We could vaccinate every American tomorrow, and that's a hugely high hurdle that we are far from meeting. But if the rest of the world does not have the vaccine and the ability to stamp out this virus, it can mutate and come back and hit us again. So we have that challenge as well. And that's well, going to require global leadership. Ambassador, uh, thank you so much. I'm afraid we've got to go to a hard out here. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Her memoir, Tough Love, is available now in paperback. Ambassador Susan Rice, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Cheryl Crow.